Wilson. Welcome back to Creature Feature. You know, we've got a really great show for you tonight. A classic movie, probably one of the best ever made. George Romero's original Night of the Living Dead. And Igor, uh, Igor's kind of hanging out down here today because we're getting his cage reinfested. Because you left it open last night and let all the bugs out, didn't you? What's that, Igor? It's a little lonely down there. Well, tell you what. Look, here's a girlfriend for you. Come back and see us later. All right. So, we've got some special guests coming in tonight. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the fun facts of the movie, Night of the Living Dead. And what's that? I think they're here now. Come on in, folks. Well, look who we got here. We have Kyra Sean, who is Karen Cooper, the little zombie girl in tonight's movie, and my my buddy, Mr. George Kasana, who is Sheriff Hi. McClellan. Hi. Well, I'm really glad you could come down to my lab here. Well, and as you can see, I, I, I kind of cleaned it up just a little bit because I was having some big stars in here. <laughs> So anyway, why don't we get into talking about tonight's movie. Now, this movie was filmed in 1967? Correct. Okay. Well, why don't we have George start out because you were uh, involved with the original production team that created it, were you not? Yes. And that was, uh, what was the name of the production company? The Image 10 Productions Incorporated. Now, who, who founded that? We did. We being everybody who was involved in Leighton Image Studios. And that was uh, George, George Romero. George Romero, Russell Streiner, John Russo, Rudolph Ritchie Jr., Vincent Cervinsky, myself, and Bill Heinzman, and Al Croft. Now, uh, out of all those folks, how many of, of you guys actually acted in the movie? I know that you, you were I there. I did. And then Bill. And Russell Streiner did. In fact, when Russell Streiner first started out, the only thing he wanted to do was act. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if anyone else had been there or not. Now, you said Bill, Bill Heinzman, who was uh, the graveyard zombie. Yes. He's now deceased, unfortunately. Now, now, what was your particular role with the, aside from uh, acting as the sheriff, what else would, were you doing with the, the picture? I'm the production manager. I own stock in it, I crew it on it, and I acted in it. So they Other kept, than that, I didn't do anything. <laughs> they kept you pretty busy then. Yes. All right. Okay, Cairo, why don't you tell us about how you got involved with this experience? Because you were, you were a very young lady when this whole thing went down, weren't you? I was. I was nine years old at the time, and uh, they needed a kid for the part of Karen Cooper. And I happened to be the right age and the right place. And um, my father, my real father, played Mary Cooper in the film. So it was nepotism and um, it reared its ugly head. And there I was. I was very, very lucky. Now, did you miss any school because of this? No, I didn't miss any school. They did. Um, my scenes were all shot on weekends or evenings, I think. Um, I think we did some in the basement at Leighton Image Studios evenings. Um, and I didn't even get to see the truck blow up, which was my, my big disappointment, so. <laughs> now, could either one of you tell me a little bit about uh, when this uh, movie first came out, what was the initial reaction to, from, from the audiences who saw this? Well, I remember at, when, when we went to the premiere, um, I spent most of my time turned around watching my friends' reactions because I was allowed to invite some of my friends and I I was just fascinated with what their reactions would be and they were jumping out of their seats and screaming. So it was really fun for me to see that. And what was your impression of it, George, being, you know, an adult? And... Well, it was a unique experience that I hope someday I'll experience again. <laughs> and I have to a degree when we went to Dallas. But... The initial reviews, some were favorable, some were not so favorable. And that was sort of a disappointment because I thought it was a good film and I hoped it would give us enough money to do another one. 
Now, were there any issues because of the the monsters or the gore in there that that perhaps gave it a few oh yeah less than desirable reviews? Yeah, well, we had different reporters watching crowds who were going to see the thing. And they would be lined up around the block, eager to get into the theater, enjoy themselves, make some noise, and have fun. Five minutes into the picture, you could have heard a pin drop. And when the movie was over, some of their lives had changed. They even reported some of them went home and boarded up the windows in their cellar. <laughs> now, Kyra, <laughs> obviously one of the, the pivotal scenes in that movie is when you are busy having your lunch or dinner with you with your parents now. Yeah. And uh, that alone, I think, was, was, was disturbing or considered disturbing, I would believe, uh, at the time the movie came out. Am I not correct? Evidently. I, I was not disturbed by it particularly, uh, but I, I've heard other people were. Now, when, when you were uh, eating mom and dad there, what, what were you really eating? Well, I didn't eat mom. I only stabbed mom. That's right. Um, I ate dad's arm, and it was actually someone's meatball sandwich from lunch <laughs> that was left over, and they, they used the ground meat from that and poured Bosco chocolate sauce all over it and stuck it onto the uh, styrofoam prosthesis on my dad's arm and you know, called it a day. So. That sounds delicious. <laughs> chocolate hamburgers, kids. <laughs> That's what zombies are made out of. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to cut into the movie now, and I want you to enjoy yourselves, and we're going to be back in just a little bit to talk a little bit more about this wonderful picture. So, Igor, if you're down there, roll that movie. <laughs> Steak Day at King Kong with our Sirloin Steak Special. You can get a sirloin steak with rice, potatoes, Greek salad, and pita bread at the lowest price in town. Hey, as a farmer, I know beef, and King Kong is the best place in town for sirloin. It melts in your mouth. All day, every Sunday. Bring the whole family to King Kong. The Michael's Cantina in the historic Old Market has been Omaha's stop for delicious Mexican food for over 36 years and home of the real margarita. Enjoy your favorite Mexican dishes in a festive atmosphere or try something new. Like their monster Sunday morning coming down burrito. <laughs> Visit Michael's Cantina at 11th and Harney in Omaha and look for a special coupon on their restaurant website.
They ought to make the day the time changes, the first day of summer. What? Well, it's 8 o'clock and it's still light. A lot of good the extra daylight does us. Now, we've still got a three-hour drive back. We're not going to be home until after midnight. Well, if it really bugged you, Johnny, you wouldn't do it. <laughs> you think I want to blow Sunday on a scene like this? You know, I figure we're either going to have to move Mother out here or move the grave into Pittsburgh. She can't make a trip like this. Oh, you know that she can't. Is there any of that candy left? No. Look at this thing. We still remember. I don't. You know, I don't even remember what the man looks like. Johnny, it takes you five minutes. Yeah, five minutes to put the wreath on the grave and six hours to drive back and forth. Mother wants to remember, so we trot 200 miles into the country and she stays at home. Well, we're here, John, all right? Test. Back on. Oh. Uh, ladies and hey, gentlemen, you. we're coming back on the air after an interruption due to technical problems. Must have been the station. Which row is it in? sleep on the time change. I think you complain just to hear yourself talk. There it is. I wonder what happened to the one from last year. Each year we spend good money on these things. We come out here and the one from last year's gone. Well, the flowers die and the caretaker or somebody takes them away. Yeah, a little spit and polish, you can clean this up. Sell it next year. Wonder how many times we bought the same one. Come on, Barb. Church was this morning, huh? Hey, I mean praying's for church, huh? Come on. I haven't seen you in church lately. <laughs> well... Not much sense in my going to church. Do you remember one time when we were small, we were out here? It was from right over there. I jumped out at you from behind the tree, and Grandpa got all excited, and he shook his fist at me, and he said, Boy, you be damned to hell. <laughs> remember that? Right over there. Well, you used to really be scared here. Johnny. Well, you're still afraid. Stop it now. I mean it. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Stop it. You're ignorant. They're coming for you, Barbara. Stop it. You're acting like a child. Look, they're coming for you. Look, there comes one of them now. The Village Bar, Ralston's favorite meat place for over 50 years. When we say everyone's welcome, we mean it. Try the Village Original Bloody Mary, the 14er, and over 12 signature drinks. Throw a dart, play a bar game, rock the house. The Village Bar is the perfect place for hanging out, watching the big game, and just being yourself. Village Bar, Ralston. 
Shop where the superheroes shop, Krypton Comics. Omaha's ultimate superstore with thousands of new and vintage titles. Sign up for Krypton's free pull list to have only your favorite comics held for you hot off the press. From superheroes to supervillains, Krypton is your source for the hottest role-playing and card games, collectible action figures, and toys. When visiting planet Earth, stop into... Krypton Comics! For 17 years, folks in Blair have trusted Olson Auto Service for complete vehicle repair and maintenance. Whether foreign or domestic, Olson's expert mechanics handle everything from major repair work to scheduled maintenance. Olson also specializes in custom exhaust installation from entire systems to chrome tips. Whether simple or complicated, Olson has the expertise to handle any car or truck at Olson Auto Service, 193 Grant Street in Blair, Nebraska. You know, you, you, you did this movie in the, in the late 60s, and I was kind of curious to know when did this whole zombie thing start becoming popular? I think it's been popular probably from the beginning, but it became wildly popular probably with either the remake of Dawn of the Dead or with Shaun of the Dead. Hmm. And that would be around what year, you think? That's a really good question. It was in the... 90s? No, <laughs> it wasn't. It was in the early 2000s. Early 2000s? Yeah. Okay. And so I, I, would, I would guess that that's when, when did you start making like convention appearances? I started, I started doing conventions in 1988. 1988, really? And the, what kind of conventions were you uh, making appearances at? At um, sci-fi comic cons and at horror conventions. So, yeah. what, were, what were some of these horror conventions? Uh, the very first one I did was in Monroeville, PA, and it was actually a sci-fi comic horror convention, and it, it was a whole new world for me. It, I mean, it opened up like this this amazing new world. I had no idea people like that existed. It's like, I found my people. This is really, really awesome. Um, but I Chiller Theater is a big one in New Jersey, Cinema Wasteland in Ohio, um, Horror Realm and Monster Bash in Pennsylvania. But, you know, there are a lot of really good conventions all over the place. I'm doing one next weekend in Nashville. So there's zombie lovers everywhere in the U.S. Everywhere, everywhere. Now, could you tell me, like, uh, I'm assuming, you know, you're at the convention and you, you know, you're signing autographs and talking with your fans, but I'm guessing you have to run across one or two nut cases. And I was wondering if maybe you had an interesting story you could share with us about that. Well, yeah, not that I would ever refer to my fans as nutcases because clearly they're very discerning people. Um, but at Monster Bash, this was many years ago, I think it was 97, uh, there was a group of guys who had come up to the show in Pittsburgh um, from Atlanta. And they were all dressed as zombies the entire weekend. And every time they would see me, they would throw themselves on the floor and say, we're not worthy, we're not worthy. It was amazing. It was Nurse. so, no, they were, they were fabulous people. But anyway, the one guy kept asking me to bite him on the arm so that his, you know, the bite mark could be gone over by a tattoo artist. And I kept refusing, <laughs> you know, flatly, like, there's no, I'm not going to bite you. This is not going to happen. Well, they caught me on my way out on that Sunday. Actually, um, a friend and I were, were sitting at the bar. We'd already packed up the car. 
and I was having a beer and the guy raced into the bar and said, please, please, this is the last chance, please bite me. And so, well, I did. And, you know, I, it was, it was, it made me very nervous because I wanted to bite him hard enough to leave an impression, but not hard enough to make him bleed. And um, hmm. so he was thrilled, you know, and he, he raced away. Thank you, thank you. And I never heard from him again. I had no idea what it was. So this guy spent all weekend nagging you yeah. for a bite, and he couldn't even get the tattoo and, and come back and show you. No, never did. Never did. Well, hopefully he doesn't, like, run into, like, Richard Keel, you know, Jaws from James Bond and ask exactly. for one of his bites, because then he's going to be in trouble. Yes, definitely. All right, well, let's talk about some some of this merchandise here. And I brought my buddy Steve from Impact Merchandising. And uh, uh, you guys uh, produce uh, some Night of the Living Dead products, do you not? We do, we do. We, uh, we mainly produce t-shirts. Um, this is our best-selling t-shirt, and it is of Karen Cooper at Kyra. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we also produce the movie poster t-shirt, uh, and then a couple other uh, Karen Cooper t-shirts. Um, this is also a bobblehead that we produce of uh, Karen Cooper. There's the box for it. Um, and then this is something that we have as a prototype, um, and that is a plushy pillow, Karen Cooper, front and back. And hopefully that will be available soon. Well, that is pretty neat, and I noticed that there's a lot of other things. Uh, uh, there's a, a couple books that have come out, and there's all sorts of DVDs. And, uh, and, and even a new uh, Mego style figure for those of us who grew up in the 70s. Now, uh, how does it feel, you know, seeing your, your picture on, on dolls and having a, a bobblehead and, and, and an action figure? Um, it's, it's a pretty amazing experience. I mean, I look at it and I, I kind of have a disconnect because of course I was nine years old then and you know, I'm, I'm not anymore. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, it's interesting. Sometimes I'm happy about it. Sometimes I'm a little, a little weirded out by it. But uh, have, have you ever worn your your t-shirt like this one, and you know, got into the grocery store and just kind of stood there with your t-shirt and smiling to see if anybody <laughs> put it all together? No, I don't. I don't wear my my own image. I can't do it. I, you know, it's just creepy. That would be creepy. But you, do you make any of the other Night of the Living Dead actors wear your t-shirt? No, I don't. I should. I think they should all have to do that every time we go to convention. I think that's a pretty good idea. Well, anyway, hey, what's that? Hey, who's at the door? Get in here. What do you kids want? Trick or treat. Trick or treat. It's the kids from the trailer park. What am I supposed to do? What do you want? I want candy. Well, I ain't got any candy. Do you have any toys? Toys? Well, as a matter of fact, I do. And you know what? I think that every kid in America would love to play with a Night of the Living Dead action figure like this. You know, you could have lots of, you know, fun zombie adventures and stuff. <laughs> so here you go, sweetie, and I suppose I gotta get something for you. Hey, Igor, give me one of your Barbie dolls there, buddy. There you go. Here, you can have this. Now, I want you kids to get out of my lap, go over there and play, and just stay out of the way. I got a show to do. Sorry about that, you know, when you have a haunted house at the top of a hill by a trailer park. You get a lot of visitors. So, anyway, getting back to all this stuff here. Um, stop it! Stop it! Knock it out! Stop it! Hey, you two! Cut it out! All right, that's enough out of you two. Get over here. Get over here. Now, what seems to be the problem, ladies? Look what Hurdle did to my dog. Oh, dear. Look at that. It looks like the, the little zombie girl kind of uh, attacked Flarby here and uh, made her into a zombie. That's pretty neat. <laughs> I knew the kids to have fun with zombie dolls. Well, you know, honey, that's life in the big toy box, so you're just going to have to deal with it. So why don't you two take your dolls down to the trailer park and have them bite some of the people down there like your parents, okay? Now get out of here. I got a show to do. Kids. Kids. Damn. Come here. I'm messing with me all the time. All right. So we were talking about some of the merch here. And my buddy Steve here from Impact Merchandising. Do you do any other monster stuff? We do. We do uh, uh, 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, we also do Day of the Dead. Um, we also have a line of Marvel t-shirts that are available on our website, impactmerch.com. Now, do you guys have like the, the, the good old classic Universal monsters too? Unfortunately, we don't. Oh, because I, I really like Wolfman and the Mummy and stuff, but... Maybe soon. Well, that, that'll be good. So, remember, go to, uh, what was that, Impact Merchandise? Impactmerch.com. Impactmerch.com. So, you go check that out, kids, because they got some really nifty shirts. All right. Well, I want to thank my pal Steve for coming in here. And, uh, and Kyra, we're going to be back with you in a little bit. And when we come back to the next cut-in, we're going to have George in here. And we're going to talk a little bit about uh, working with Mr. Romero and, and some of the inspiration behind how you kill zombies. So... Igor, roll that movie. He'll hear you. Here he comes now. I'm getting out of here. John!
Not your typical restaurant. Not your typical place. Romeo's. Not your typical restaurant. For your not your typical taste. Romeo's. Romeo's Mexican food and pizza. Not your typical restaurant. Shop where the superheroes shop, Krypton Comics. Omaha's ultimate superstore with thousands of new and vintage titles. Sign up for Krypton's free pull list to have only your favorite comics held for you hot off the press. From superheroes to supervillains, Krypton is your source for the hottest role-playing and card games, collectible action figures, and toys. When visiting planet Earth, stop into... Krypton Comics! King Kong. Sunday is Steak Day at King Kong with our Sirloin Steak Special. You can get a sirloin steak with rice, potatoes, Greek salad, and pita bread at the lowest price in town. Hey, as a farmer, I know beef, and King Kong is the best place in town for sirloin. It melts in your mouth. All day, every Sunday. Bring the whole family to King Kong. King Kong. Here's the problem. They're right under our noses the whole time, all three of them. Relax, it's fine. We got them and they're not going anywhere. Oh, I don't like it. All the destruction they caused, the anarchy, the mayhem. It still doesn't feel safe. Not at all. We got them under lock and key, behind cold bars, trapped like rats. But their message, it's out there infecting others. It still moves free. Enjoy Romeo's Grande Pizza and Taco Combo. One large two-topping pizza, four soft-shell tacos, chips, and queso dip for only $21.99. Only at Romeo's. Carry out only. Not your typical restaurant. Hello, folks, and welcome back. Really hope you're enjoying tonight's movie, Night of the Living Dead. And I'm here with my buddy, George Santa, and we're going to talk a little bit about his experiences working on this picture. Now, George, can you tell me, I'm, I'm kind of curious, um, of all those parts in the movie, how did you get to become the sheriff? When we were with Leighton Newman Studios and preparing to do this film, somebody mentioned that I looked like a cop. <laughs> so they said, you're the sheriff. Okay, I'm the sheriff. Now, did they uh, require you to uh, provide your own weaponry? That was all my weapon. Not all of it, but most of it was. So uh, all the, the rifles and all the ammo? Shotguns, and... rifles, my ammo belt. That was all mine. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Now, can, can you tell me, um, why don't you share a story with us about uh, maybe some of your fondest memories working on this film? What were like some of the highlights? Well, the greatest joy I had as a production manager was the fact that no one, regardless of what they were doing, said, that's not my job, I'm not going to do it. Everyone said, how else can I help? What do you need? What do you want me to do? And that made it a joy to go to work. You weren't going to work, you were having fun. That's very important because if you're not having fun, then kind of drags things down on a production. And if you cheapen the product by dissent or tension, the public knows it. Oh yeah, and especially if they're horror fans because they're, they're very particular. Yes. Now, uh, what was probably one of the, the more interesting uh, stories you could share in regards to some of the special effects with that movie? We did our best to kill Gary Strider. <laughs> there was a scene whereby Dwayne Jones as Ben pushed a overstuffed chair out onto the porch saturated it with lighter fluid, lit it on fire, and kicked it off the porch into assembling ghouls to back them away from the house. We had to reshoot it several times. Every time we reshot, we would set the chair back up, extinguish it naturally, and Gary would saturate it with gasoline. Unbeknownst to us, the exterior of the chair was out, but the, the stuffing, and the wires and everything were still glowing hot. And when Gary dumped gasoline on it, it ignited, flared up all over him, all over the truck. And he was off the porch and Bill Heinzman tackled him 
threw a blanket over and put the fire out, and the rest of us were fighting the fire on the truck. <laughs> One of those uh, flammable zombie movies. You kind of got to watch out for those kids. And that was the only accident we had for the entire production. That's pretty interesting. Now, can you tell me maybe about uh, one of the, the lesser pleasant experiences, maybe a mishap or something that, that went on there? That was the only mishap. That was? Yeah. Now, now I, I, I heard a rumor that, that you guys sh shot the whole day without even filming the camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were functioning as automaton. We had worked something like 22 hours straight. And we were shooting a scene, and we realized that the counter exceeded the capacity of the magazine. And we said, wait a minute, something's wrong. <laughs> so we stopped, and Russell Striner thought Jack Russo loaded it. Jack Russo thought I loaded it. I thought that Russell Striner loaded it, and none of us loaded it. So we shot three scenes with no film. <laughs> now, you, obviously you've been out doing the conventions, yes. just like uh, Kyra, and I was just kind of wondering if you had any words to say about the, the, the people that you've been meeting out on the road? Well, you have to remember this. We made a movie. The people who went to see that movie made that movie the success it has become. They don't owe us, we owe them. And you give the fans their money's worth. You pay them back the best way you can. And by making yourself available to the public, we hope that's what we need to do. Now, I would think that you get a lot of uh, folks who, who are making their own zombie movies or, or horror movies, and they, they say that this is an inspiration to them. Is it not? I can't speak for them. I can say I'm not pleased at all with some of the stuff that's out there today. <laughs> but that's their business, not mine. Yeah, because, you know, uh, now the, some of the, the makeup, I just want to touch on that a little bit. Because I, I'm thinking this is probably one of the, the, the first modern zombie movies where you've got some, some heavy-duty makeup on here to make these folks look dead. We revolutionized the film industry. And I think Carl Hardman and Bonnie Priori, if I'm not mistaken, as best I can recall, did the makeup and some of the effects of it. And we used uh, mortuary putty for wounds and that. And I don't know what it was like to take it off. They only put it on. Now, what were you guys using for blood in here? This was a black and white kid, so... Chocolate syrup, Hershey syrup, and sometimes red ink, if the blood needed to run. Hmm. Sounds delicious. <laughs> this movie is, is pretty much the Bible for most modern zombie fans out there. There's all sorts of TV shows and new movies coming out, but the, 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 same, the, the, the same fact holds up that if you shoot a zombie in the head, you kill it. And I'm, I'm just kind of curious, you know, how, how the, the production staff came up with this, this, this concept that you shoot him in the head. I mean, did, did, did the writers and Romero and, and you guys, you know, how did you come up with this? Well, we're sitting around trying to decide that. And we tried different things. Like somebody said you should uh, ah, the guy ah. that had killed him, but that didn't work. Oh, no. So we don't want any train so, next. We said maybe you should oh, 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 between oh. the legs, but that didn't work either. Oh, oh dear. So then what did you have to come up with then? Uh, so then we said, well, there's only one way to do this. Ah. And down he goes. Well, there you have it, folks. You saw it firsthand and how they came up with that concept. So Thank you, George. My and, pleasure. Thank you for having me. And if you want, you can take this thing with you. Throw it. What, what do you normally do after you kill him? There's another one for the fire. There you go. <laughs> All righty. So let's get back into tonight's movie, and we'll be back with you in just a little bit. <laughs>
Don't worry about him. I can handle him. Probably be a lot more of them as soon as they find out about us. The truck is out of gas. This pump out here is locked. Is there a key? We can try to get out here if we can get some gas. Is there a key? Tried this. Do you live here? some other people. Maybe, maybe we better take some food. I'll see if I can find some food. Two of them out there. Have you seen any more around here? I can I take care of those know. two. I but don't I know, know you're afraid, but we have I to... don't know! I don't know! What's happening? Oh. Don't 
Don't look at it. Hi, my name is Neil Vasek with Deep Real Estate, and I'm really excited about helping my growing list of real estate clients. I'm really customer focused, and I do everything possible for my clients to put my customers first. The most important thing for me is my family, and as a family man and real estate professional, I take care of my clients. So give me a call today at 402-658-0979 to see how I can help you bring you home today. Shop where the superheroes shop, Krypton Comics, Omaha's ultimate superstore with thousands of new and vintage titles. Sign up for Krypton's free pull list to have only your favorite comics held for you hot off the press. From superheroes to supervillains, Krypton is your source for the hottest role-playing and card games, collectible action figures, and toys. When visiting planet Earth, stop into Krypton Comics. Why don't you see if you can find some wood, some boards, something about the fireplace, something we can nail this place up. Look, I know you're afraid. I'm afraid too. But we have to try to board the house up together. Now, I'm going to board up the windows and the doors. Do you understand? We'll be all right here. We'll be all right here until someone comes to rescue us. But we'll have to work together. You'll have to help me. Now, I want you to go in and get some wood so I can board the place up. Do you understand? Okay? Okay?
out the biggest ones you can find. Yeah, this room looks pretty secure. If we have to, we can run in here and board up the doors. Won't be long before those things be back pounding their way in here. They're afraid now. They're afraid of fire. I found that out. To be continued, baby. Come back next time to see the rest of it. Ah, yeah. Well, folks, that's it for tonight's movie. And I hope you had a lot of fun watching it and learned a lot about zombies. Now, I want to thank my special guests for dropping by the lab tonight, George Cassano and Kyra Sean. Now, you guys are from Pennsylvania, correct? That's right. Yes. Now, uh, what is Pennsylvania famous for? Zombies. Zombies. Well, there you go, kids. So, the next time you're traveling through Pennsylvania, make sure you always carry a rifle with you. You gotta hit him in the head. You got it. All right, so here's Dr. Sanguinary signing off, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. Bye. We hope you enjoy it. <laughs>